Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says, The Lord in the midst of thee, not the Lord seated in heaven, not the Lord somewhere, the Lord thy God who has come in the midst of thee is mighty. And because he has come in the midst of thee, he will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So a miracle service is a moment dedicated by God to visit his people and to bring solutions to their concerns, their fears, and their troubles. What is a miracle service? A miracle service is an encounter with God where he reveals his power and his glory in the midst of his people an encounter with god where he reveals his power and he reveals his glory in the midst of his people have this at the back of your mind many believers casually come to church they casually come for such a mighty and marvelous service like this well i'm just going to church i was invited by some good fellow perhaps my family member and I'm here just to fulfill the ritual of church. Have it at the back of your mind that God is in this place tonight visiting us to bring solutions to our concerns, to bring solutions to our fears, to bring solutions to our problems, our troubles. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord using a platform like this delivered him from them not some from them all are we together now what is available in a miracle service you will be surprised that many believers cannot answer that question the bible always likens prophetic gatherings like this to a spiritual feast to a supper as we find in luke 14. luke chapter 14 we're reading 17 then for sake of time, we'll jump to 21 and read all to 24. Luke 14, 17, then 21. A service like this in the mind of God as revealed in the ministry of Jesus is a feast, a banquet, and a supper. And it's important for you to know when you go to an occasion, a well-organized occasion, among the many things they do is before the meals come, they serve you with something called a menu. Am I right on that? and it captures a detail of the available meals it is within your power to choose they tell you this is available that is available so that you know you have an idea luke 14 and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready you don't invite people when you are still preparing. You don't invite people to a banquet when the kitchen is yet to finish all the things that they have to do. When all things are set, the table is set, then you can invite them. Jump to verse 21 for time's sake. He invited a few other people and they gave all kinds of flimsy excuses and so on and so forth. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Listen carefully. Then the master of the house, being angry that those that were invited refused to show up, he said, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring the following. The poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. What kind of feast is this? Usually in Jewish days, these kinds of people were not even allowed in the city. They were kept outside of the city because they were termed unclean. But there is a kind of feast, there is a kind of banquet that is particularly made for these kinds of people. The poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. Reading to 24. Next verse. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. So he called on these groups of people and they came. He said, yet there is still room. 23. And the Lord said, go to the highways and the byways or the hedges and compel them any them you find confuse them lost them defeated them like the men of the men who came to david in the place of adulam any them you find who are available 
they may not be lame, they may not be weak, they may not be part of the first set of people, but there is still room for them. A miracle service is beyond the healing service. A miracle service is beyond the deliverance service. A miracle service is a service that is open to anyone who desires to feast, enjoying the power, the grace, the wisdom of God. All those who had these conditions were called and they said there is still more room. I may not be sick. I may not be oppressed. But how about confusion? How about the age-long captivity? How about the limiting beliefs that have kept me? Let's finish that scripture. And the Lord said, go to the highway, the byway, compel them to come that my house shall be filled. Final verse. For I say unto you, that none of those people who rejected this offer shall taste of my supper. When God calls men, it's a feast, it's a banquet. What is available in a miracle service like this? Number one, God's power to save. I'm listing for you the spiritual menu that is available in this place tonight. God's power to save. Number two, what is available in such a prophetic gathering like this? God's power to heal. Luke 5, reading 17, then we jump to 24 and end at 26. Luke 5, 17, we jump to 24, ending at 26. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. I'd like you to look closely here. There's a lesson I want to bring out. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem. And the Bible records that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Take note. Not present to heal one person, present to heal as many. Now jump to verse 24. The Bible says, talking about one man who was sick of palsy. But that he may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. And he said unto the sick, one man, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into your house. 25. And immediately he arose. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal them. But only one person was healed in that meeting. The power of God did not come to heal only one person. It was available for any them whose hearts were open and hungry. He took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. Final verse 26. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying we have seen, we have seen strange things today. Can you imagine that? Many of them desired to be healed, but they did not know how to connect to the healing power of God. They were celebrating and rejoicing with those who were sick. And as wonderful as that is, and that was, they went away, some of them perhaps, not having their healing. It's important for you to know that in a spiritual banquet like this, called a miracle service, God's power to heal is available. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that tonight's healing will not just be for a few people. But it will be for as many people who are tired like the woman with the issue of blood haven't spent all her earnings she was not an irresponsible woman this woman worked hard and she saved money only to use it to take care of her health her passion to remain her passion to not die made her to turn and become a poor woman again what is available in a miracle service like this god's power to deliver the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob, it says Obadiah 1 and verse 17, the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It is first deliverance, then holiness, then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. What is available in a miracle service like this tonight? Illumination like you are receiving now light from heaven the bible says in isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light is come our precious worship team sang it so beautifully charging us to arise hallelujah 
it is not only God that will arise. You too, you will arise. Because the reason why he has arisen is so that you will also arise. Is that true? Yes. But the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. An explanation of the issues of concern alongside the way out. You see that? In the presence of God and in a spiritual banquet like this, God brings light to the dark areas of your life. As the word of God is coming now, God is bringing perspective, clarity, understanding. You may be knowing why you are where you are, but he does not just give you information as to why you are where you are. He shows you through the lens of scripture, the way out of any trouble, the way out of any calamity. I prophesy to you, someone is finally finding his way out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again, someone who is hungry and desperate is finally finding his way out. Yeah. Way out of losses, way out of retrogression, way out of shame, way out of reproach. It, happen for, it happens for others until it gets to your turn. It looks like there is a mysterious force that sits on your way going forward and you are not able to go forward. There is always a way out. The Bible says, and Jesus himself knew what to do. It is dangerous to not know what you do. Tonight, God is showing someone what to do. So in a spiritual feast like this, God's power is available to save even to the uttermost. God's power is available to heal. God's power is available to deliver. God's power is available to bring light, illumination, direction. What else is here? Restoration. Ah, God's power to restore. Yes, sir. To compress time, to restore. Crying because you lost money. Crying because you lost relationships. Crying because as at the time opportunities came, you were not wise enough to know how to maximize them. Now you are wiser and yet the opportunities have gone. Can God bring it back again? Welcome to a banquet where your restoration is part of the menu. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you believe that I'm not joking. If you don't believe in the God of restoration, your life will be bitter, Mara. It will be bitter in many regards. Because can I tell you, life does not wait for you to be wise to maximize it. It just passes. If at the time the opportunity came, you didn't know God enough. You didn't understand the kingdom enough. That opportunity just passes like that. And so God says, I will restore. Not just the things, I can restore the years. For someone, you literally wasted your January till October in confusion, foolishness, and pride. Last week, you repented. What do you now do with the days left? There is a God who restores. In the name of Jesus, there is a God who restores. Hmm. You believe this? There is restoration. What else is available here? Guidance and direction. This is powerful. I hope you know that speed is useless without direction. Anybody who fires on all four cylinders on the road is usually someone who has been able to have a clear direction. Every time you are confused, perhaps you are trying to look for a house and you are not sure which is which, the first thing that suffers is your speed. You have to slow down until you ascertain the house you are getting to. Only a foolish person will be speeding in confusion. There is a relationship between speed and direction. Are we together? So when the devil wants to mark your life at a moment, he brings an atmosphere of confusion around your life. And with that confusion, your speed is impeded. And I taught you that the unit of destiny is time. Whatever takes dominion over your time has taken a major portion of your life and destiny. The unit of destiny is time. This is why God comes with guidance and direction. 
for someone you can be seated here and tonight while this word is coming as the anointing comes you may not fall you may not jump you may not shout but you will just hear in your spirit the united kingdom is where your destiny is that's it direction has come for you i hope you know that when god speaks the power to make what he says comes with it too it is only men who speak and yet don't have the power to back what they say if god tells you go left the power to take you to go left comes with his word son of man stand up upon your feet ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and i will speak unto you he gave him an instruction but the man did not have the power to comply verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and i heard It's one thing to want to go where you where. listen everybody's destiny hear me please there is the Bible says I think that should be um, Hebrews 10 and verse 7 if I recall it says lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will God is not scratching his head you will hear me say wondering what to make out of your life you are not the only one he created out of the eight billion people on earth i can tell you everybody has a destiny in christ it is only a wicked god who will bring you to the scene and leave you to keep roaming around freelancing your idea about what to make about your life there are many people here you may not be sick but you need to sort this issue of confusion and destiny they wake up in the morning absolutely nothing driving their lives absolutely they sit today and say i'm having something for ministry tomorrow i'm having something for business um next tomorrow well i don't know and they live their lives just getting old with no mark upon the earth no mark upon the sands of time tonight should be that night you get angry and say lord i am tired of escorting men while making constructive progress towards destiny what did you create me for i can't be here to waste time celebrating birthdays with no vision celebrating birthdays with no direction my confusion started at 13 now i am 45 still confused guidance and direction are we together yes there are literally people right now i want you to listen to me carefully there are literally people right now confused nobody is getting blessed because of your life no one is eating because you are alive no one is serving jesus because you are alive you didn't build any school you didn't build any organization you are not even you are nothing at all wake up in the morning it's night let's go to bed wake up in the morning again it's night let's go to bed what do we have today social media five minutes turning to five hours what is trending now by evening i'm hungry you go and eat you don't have money because you are not visionary you beg in any case life just goes if you are god will you design such a life for an individual every spirit of the waster wasting your time wasting your life this may not be for everybody but from the depth of my spirit i'm prophesying to someone who has been wasting the gift of life wasting the gift of time admiring those who are making a mark in destiny i pray for you among the many things that will rest on you tonight a clear direction of your purpose and destiny <laughs> hallelujah hear me jesus is very as a revelation of god is very unapologetic about his hatred for unfruitfulness two stories in the bible demonstrate the pain that god feels every time we're unfruitful the first was the story of the fig tree it was not a parable he came and he saw a fig tree having green leaves but never produce figs and he cursed it he said let no food grow on thee henceforth forever second story was the story of the parable of the talents he gave one five talents he gave one two talents he gave the other one talent you would think he would be satisfied after all out of three there was two over three success if i were if i were him i would be happy at least two people did well but he focused on the one person as if all the rest failed that's how an unapologetic god is 
as far as on, on, on productivity and fruitfulness is concerned. Make up your mind from this night that I must live a fruitful and a meaningful life. Every trouble you are there, trouble to others you are there, but blessing and affecting people. Christmas is coming by next month where people are looking for gifts to bless all those who God used to bless them. They forget you. Even your neighbors don't remember you because there is nothing about your life counting. You watch people buy cows. They buy gifts and they're telling people thank you. Yet you are the neighbor and nobody can say thank you. I had you praying and it inspired me to pray. It was you that brought order to my life. Hi. In the name of Jesus, I pray again. Whatever is wasting your days, whatever is wasting your time that you are just existing but not living i'm praying that this night in this place may you find a clear direction to purpose <laughs> hallelujah this one is hard bar yes in every menu not every meal tastes the same there are others that are hot and spicy am i right on that there are others that are okay you can make do with it what is available in a minute in a minute miracle service like this angelic activities angelic activities i believe in the ministry of angels i hope that next year god will grant us grace and I would do a series on the ministry of angels. The average believer does not even know why angels exist and to what end. So people do all kinds of things. Some command them, some shout, some beg them, some worship them. And there's all kinds of confusion around the ministry of angels. May God grant us grace to really know why they are here. And next year I hope we'll be able to deal with the subject of angels. Are we together now? But everywhere God is, angels will usually come there. As we learn in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob came to a place called Luz and the Bible says he lay on a stone to sleep and he saw a ladder that was ascending, I mean a ladder that reached the heavens and at the top of it was God or the appearance of God himself speaking, I am this, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And then he saw angels ascending and angels descending. When Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible lets us know that when he was done praying, after Satan came to tempt him and he became victorious, angels came and ministered to him. Everywhere you see the presence of God, you also find the ministry of angels. Why are they there? The Bible lets us know with clarity and precision that angels are there to bring to pass the word of God. They walk in partnership with the minister of the Holy Spirit, causing his word to come to pass. Are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to them that be the heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Are we together? The ministry of angels. If God is in that place, like he is in this place, you must find the ministry of angels. The Bible lets us know that there are many activities that happen in Mount Zion. But ye are come to Mount Zion. And he begins to list the things there. The spirits of just men made perfect. Are we together? And he says an innumerable company of angels. That means as many in the midst of the thousands, tens of thousands of people in this place tonight. There are angels that are more than the people. If... If a legion of demons can be in one man, how much more the angels of God? How many demons fell from heaven? It was only a third. Angels. That means there is one standing near you. And it's not standing to just hear what I'm saying. He's standing to hear what God is saying through me. That when God says it's time for you to arise, the angels stand. Have you seen what angels did? Two angels use hailstone and they killed people. You don't know what angels can do when the command comes from God. They are not there to do your bidding. I told you, they are there to do God's bidding. If it looks like they are obeying you, is they are not slaves to you. No. They, they, they are sent to minister, to bring to pass the speakings of God. 
it is when the saints carry the word of God and makes it their word, then it looks like they are obeying you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that it pleased Herod. Herod decided to vex certain Jews and they caught James and beheaded James. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, they now caught Peter and they bound Peter expecting that after the feast of unleavened bread, they would bring him out to the people. Verse 5 says, the church became angry and they said, there is something we can do. We are not alone. We may not have access to the prison, but we know there is angelic ministry. And the Bible says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. How did God answer? Verse 6, the Bible now says, when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the Bible says, as the keepers before the door went to the prison. Verse 7. Behold, who did God send? The angel of the Lord came unto him and a light shined in prison and it was that angel that brought him out. Please help me honor Reverend Sam Oye. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence tonight. Are we together? So what do we find here? The ministry of angels. What else is available in a miracle service like this? Impartation, a transference of graces, a transference of graces. Technology has been able to simulate impartation to a degree using a device called Bluetooth. Say Bluetooth. I don't know why it's tooth, but Bluetooth. That's what we're taught. Here is a world that believes everything you can't ask. Once you are not the inventor, you will take whatever you were given and swallow it like that so i can bring my device near yours or within a reasonable distance isn't it amazing and a whole information without our phones contacting themselves there can be a transference you can transfer music you can transfer rubbish you can transfer thoughts that can, whatever it is there is a possibility and it can live and it will not deplete the information that is in that device say impartation you don't transfer music and then yours disappears. No, except your phone is not good. Listen, you need to believe this. And I'm sure there are all kinds of advancements that are coming now. Always be conscious. And let me tell you this. Impartation in a house like this is both vertical and horizontal. It is not only the man of God. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered, including your sitting ordered by the Lord. You may not know that you've been crying and say, Lord, I'm trusting for a grace. This laziness and God will order your step to sit near someone that has a grace for diligence. And while you are looking at apostle, the grace is coming from here, but it's also coming across. You have to believe this. Impartation. You believe what I'm saying? Impartation is not just a transference of graces from the man of God. No. There are people who perhaps they would have traveled and not come for this service. But for your sake, in addition to what God is doing through Joshua Selman, he brings them and puts them. Remember the Bluetooth thing we are talking about? Just close to you. Because that guy, he gave God a kind of seed that made God to vow and say, I place the power to prosper on you. And you have been crying, oh God, bring my family out of pain. You wanted to sit inside, but the person carrying that grace is in the overflow. And even though you came early, God still okay that you sat outside and while you are complaining saying I want apostle to see me the real person carrying the grace you have been fasting for is seated close to you if you don't believe what I just said you are not a Christian you don't know God it is the reason why every man of God must know that you are just one of the vessels being used in a service like this not everybody will stand on stage but everybody is being used by God that means as a man of God, as I am preaching, if there are graces I need that are available and I'm just conscious of giving without receiving, I can live empty even though I came full to bless people. A spiritual banquet like this has the menu of the power of God to save. 
the power of God to heal, the power of God to deliver, the power to bring light, illumination, an explanation to your predicaments alongside a scriptural way out. The power to restore guidance and direction, angelic activities, enforcing the speakings of the spirit. What is available in a spiritual banquet like this? Encounters. Both physical encounters and spiritual encounters. What is an encounter? A supernatural experience that brings you into the reality of a truth, the reality of a dimension. The goal of encounters is to create conviction. Some of you are Christians, but you don't really believe God yet. Can he do it? But something can happen to you. But I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. I know God lives but ah, the kind of trouble and the kind of pit that I am in and while the word is coming it's a supernatural thing. I may not even be talking along that area suddenly the grace for you comes and the reality of God in an area just becomes crystallized in your life. I can believe God I can build this house even though all I have home and abroad is 100,000 as I was hearing the word an example will come from the preacher that may not even be connected to the sermon for your sake and something from that example will suddenly both your logic and your discernment will agree that God is able and immediately that happens your mind and your spirit has received that reality encounters both physical and spiritual those who encounter God become testaments of the dimensions of him they encounter when you encounter a healing Jesus your life will be a clear manifestation of a healing Jesus. When you encounter a prospering Jesus, your life becomes a clear manifestation of a prospering Jesus. When you encounter the Jesus that delivers, one of the ways that God brings men into ministry is to choose the area he has called them to serve and give them unique encounters in that area so that their convictions become strongest. Luke will say in Luke chapter 1, the things that are most surely believed. The things that are most surely believed. You don't believe everything at the same level. On a, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, there are some of you who believe prosperity more than you believe healing. There are some of you who believe deliverance more than you believe all of these things. And God's assignment in an atmosphere like this is to upgrade your conviction through encounters so that it will match the threshold that can deliver the result expected. If he has called you, for instance, to take his ability to prosper and favor men, and your believing God in the area of favor and prosperity is two on a scale of one to ten, nobody will place demand on the grace of God on your life because that is almost zero in the spirit. You can't get any result like that. And so an encounter will come. And that encounter lifts your faith level in that area to a level where you can be blessed and through your life you can bring many into that experience. If we're together, say amen. amen. Now listen carefully. What are the major channels by which God visits his people? I need to say this. There are major channels. What are the major channels? Every time... God is bringing a visitation to his people. It's important for you to know that there is a modus operandi in the spirit. God is a God of patterns and God is a God of order. Are we together? If it is a God of the Bible visiting his people, like Zephaniah says, there is a way that he comes through. Number one, what are the channels? Every time God is visiting his people, the first way he visits people is through his wisdom. His wisdom. As the word is taught like you are hearing now, there is a visitation of God's wisdom. Christ appears unto you as the wisdom of God. His wisdom. As the word is taught, his wisdom is revealed. Number two, God visits people by making available his power. Wisdom constructs your understanding. It guides your decision. You see, 
the excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions that you take if your decisions are frail if your decisions are weak if your decisions do not produce superior results it is because you are bankrupt of the wisdom of god the excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality and the superiority of decisions that are taken and the results that follow so number two his power when god brings solutions they are beyond scientific even though they can be scientific they are beyond philosophical, even though they can be philosophical. God's primary way of bringing solutions to people is through the supernatural, his power. So it is possible that you came with an infirmity and minutes after now, that infirmity leaves. You see, medicine will be able to confirm that it's gone. That devil is gone and gone forever. You see that now? Yes but that the technology by which that result came even though can be explained by science is through the power of god and there are mysteries ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with the business of the power of god there is a portion of it that is given to the saints to understand but there are certain aspects of god's power the bible says there is no searching of his understanding there is a level as far as the administration of god's power is concerned the bible says just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child there is an aspect science can explain logic can explain philosophy can explain intellect can explain but there is a dimension beyond which the only thing you say is to god be the glory this one is only god that knows how he did it like the testimony that you'll be talking about after this service there, there there is listen there is an aspect of it that you will tell people one plus one i know how it became two i know how it became four from there i can't explain all i know is that there was an answer equal to whatever god said listen science teaches us that one plus one is two but you see one plus one plus god equals to the answer he puts there it can be three it can be ten it can be one million the moment you bring god into an occasion he is in control of the answer that he puts there are we together god's equation for you a tenant plus bankruptcy can equal a landlord an equation that does not make sense every time results don't make sense there is a factor there you are not seeing the moment God is introduced, he disrupts logic. It goes beyond the realm of reasoning. So don't start calculating it. You may not see wind tonight. You may not see rain. But don't ask how the valley is filled with water. This is God for you. If I were asked to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt, I probably would gather certain engineers and say, what do we do now? Let's be able to measure the depth of the water because the first assignment will be to successfully part the sea. The second assignment is to find a way of looking for sand to build that gap now that depth that has been created but not when it's god everything can happen overnight like you are seated here now and god is waking someone somewhere in the name of jesus christ i'm not motivating you i'm prophesying to you that you are seated here and the god that i serve waking someone and bringing to remembrance putting you in the hearts of men it is true Is someone learning what is the third channel as far as experiencing his visitation encounters like I said earlier on he comes revealing his wisdom he comes revealing his power he brings you encounters do you know ladies and gentlemen that you can be seated here while you are looking at me the spirit of grace will come and pick you to a dimension like he took Ezekiel and you will no longer be in this service and you are somewhere with the king of glory and he's showing you things 
Haratusia showing you things, bringing direction. All of a sudden, everybody disappears in this room, and it is only you, an audience of one, and His Majesty speaking to you, bringing perspective to your life, showing you what has been happening in your family. That this thing happened. You don't need to be a prophet. Blessed is the man that God causes to approach him. The moment he opens the vistas of encounter, with them will come explanations, solutions, and conviction. Do you believe this? What is the fourth channel by which God visits his people? The prophetic. Ah, the prophetic. The prophetic is a potent channel. Every time men cried unto God, he came down using the prophetic. I have heard the cry of my people, Exodus chapter 3, by reason of their taskmasters. He says, and I am come down. We never saw him physically, but we saw a mysterious camera called Moses who encountered the God of the Bible and he led literally single-handedly went to Egypt, the center of wizardry and brought over two point something million people out with only a rod and no assistance whatsoever. The prophetic is powerful. When men are in trouble, every time men got into trouble, whether self-inflicted or caused by darkness, God will send a prophet. A prophet here does not mean a prophetic office. There are three levels to the prophetic. There is the office of a prophet manifesting the prophetic. Are we together? There is the gift of prophecy but there is the operation of the prophetic. The operation of the prophet is not limited to individuals inclined to the prophetic. Maturity brings every believer to a state where you can operate in the prophetic. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. So God comes to us like he's coming to us tonight by his wisdom, by his power. I'm saying that so that you will expect the miracle service is already going on. There are people, the moment they only believe they are in church, when someone is shouting and falling and rolling, they say, finally, service has started. Whereas God came sins, visiting people, bringing comprehension of truth. Now, this is the zenith of my discussion before we begin to pray. And please, I want you to lend me your attention. May I request you pray in the spirit for one minute so that you open up your channels for reception further. Go ahead and pray. Shabika parosupian nakata legede brens kamani shalakoskes ebrekete barakatos kapregede belene kosiata in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A quick recap. We explained that a miracle service is a moment where God decides, according to Zephaniah 3.17, to come in the midst of his people and to bring a visitation. Hallelujah. Mightily revealing his power, revealing his glory in the midst of his people. And I did tell us the things that are available in a miracle service like this. That every service like this, according to Jesus, is likened to a feast and a supper. And that in that supper, there are all kinds of people. They brought the lame, they brought the sick, they brought the maimed, and he said, there is still space for more. And he said, now I will not give conditions. Anybody who is available, join the list of the more. The feast, there is still room for it for you. And I began to list for you that the, there are certain things available in a feast like this. Power to save, power to heal. In fact, all that is captured in Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5, they are called his benefits, five of them. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. The focus is on the Lord, but also remember that he comes with benefits. Number one, who forgiveth all thine iniquity, not some. Two, who healed all thy diseases, not some. Three, who redeemed thy life from destruction, deliverance. And number four, honor who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Five, prosperity who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle, his benefits. Now, why do many believers come into an atmosphere like this and yet they do not receive? Please, I want you to pay attention. 
I've studied for many years by the privilege of God's grace the supernatural and this spirit activity of God visiting his people and why in the midst of such mighty presence of God others receive and others do not and I've been able to put together by the spirit of God four major reasons there are many but in order of priority I have found out from my life from the experience of scripture, from the life of mighty people who have commanded visitations across territories and nations, that there are four major reasons why although God shows up in the midst of his people, his people may not receive. John chapter 1 from verse 11, John puts it beautifully. He says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. It is possible that God comes. The he there can be any expression of God. His wisdom came to his own. His power came to his own. His favor came to his own. Are we together? His lifting came to his own. Jesus the way came to his own. Jesus the truth came to his own. Jesus the life came to his own. The deliverer came to his own. But they received him not. Then the next verse says, But as many as received him, Unfortunately, as many, doesn't leave a number, but it tells you there are chances that there are people who will still not receive, even though he came. One thing is a fact from this scripture, he came. He came. His power came. His healing came. Our precious people led us through that song. That the God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer, that he would come and make manifest his presence. He's heard it like he heard Jabez. But whether or not you will receive tonight will be dependent on these reasons. Are you ready? Number one, the first reason why many do not receive in an atmosphere like this is lack of expectation. Lack of expectation. There is no dis definition of their desired expectation. This is very important. Luke 18, let's hurry up. Luke 18 from verse 40 to 43 lack of expectation believers just stroll into his presence carelessly hoping that at least i'm here whatever god wants to do with me and while that is sincere that is not enough there must be a definition to your desired expectation talking about blind Bartimaeus, jesus is passing through the jericho now that would be his last time passing that street and Jesus stood and commanded him, the him being blind Bartimaeus, to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, 41, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto you? Look up, please. This would sound silly, almost irresponsible and sarcastic of Jesus. You would think that because a man were blind and he was shouting, Have mercy on me. He did not define what he wanted. Have mercy on me means let me get your sympathy. It doesn't mean that he has defined his expectation. Jesus taught us a profound lesson here. He comes to the man. You ask for my sympathy. I am here. Available to do all. I'm ready to give you a visitation. What do you want? And the man now zoomed down. He said that I may receive my sight. I've taught you here. Remember our, our teaching on the scene? I, he never said that I may see. Because his eyes were open. It's just that he was not seeing. The problem was not lack of eyes. The problem was not even lack of the movement of eyes. Is that he did not have sight. Your eyes can be open, yet you are not seeing. Jesus never said, see. Look at how Jesus answers. Jesus said unto him, you ask to receive your sight. I won't give you something else. I will give you consistent with your expectation. Verbatim. Receive thy sight the man at gate beautiful when he came he was a man who was lame but his expectation was to receive arms probably he had children who knows he had relatives who knows or he wanted to take care of his immediate need and he saw this gentleman Peter and John going to pray at the hour of prayer and he stops them and you know hoping that he would get something they said look on us and the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive but the Bible tells us that it, something what is something expecting to receive something consistent with his arms 
And Peter said, no, if I leave this man this way, silver and gold, let me just tell you straight. I'm sorry to disappoint your expectation. So Peter defines the something. He says, I know what you are looking for. Silver and gold. Sorry, we do not have it. However, we will not leave you in this state. There is something we have. And even though it is not yet your expectation, it is really what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the real something you need is the ability to rise up and walk. This is a prophetic message. There is someone who is looking for silver and gold right now. But you are coming to people and they are telling you, no, we will not give you. And you are offended because what you really need is the ability to rise up and walk. Arise, shine, your light has come. Rise up and walk. This is not just to a man who is physically lame. Your ability to rise up. If you cannot rise up, you cannot walk. It takes courage to rise up. It takes discernment to rise up. It takes a revelation of who you are in Christ to rise up. There are many of you who have been sitting around the corridors of destiny, begging for arms, and God keeps sending people who you get disappointed by because the something you are expecting is silver and gold, and they are coming like I'm coming tonight, that beyond silver and gold, in my case, you will get both silver and gold in the name of Jesus, but beyond it beyond it there is an ability that is greater than silver and gold in the economy of heaven the ability to rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can receive silver and gold but if you one of the major characteristic of living things is movement and motion and silver and gold does not have the power on its own to create motion the value of silver and gold is that you can rise up and walk and use it. You came here asking for something. You are fastening your eyes on me, expecting to receive. For others, you are just praying and saying, Lord, something that meets my immediate need. And the apostle is saying, no, God is too mindful. He's mindful of your today, your tomorrow and next. Unfortunately, I do not have that which will meet your immediate need, but there is something I can give you, an ability, and that comes in the name of Jesus, not stored in a bank, not stored in a marketplace. You don't find it in a mall. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Someone prophesy, say, rise up. Rise up. You are speaking to yourself, say, rise up, rise up. and walk. Rise up and walk means rise up and excel. Rise up and walk means shake yourself from the limitations of yesterday and be able to stand up and start making constructive progress. Rise up and walk means rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The Bible says the righteous falleth seven times. Listen to me, let me tell you, the ability to rise up and walk is proof of courage, audacity. Rise up after a loss. Rise up after pain. Rise up after limitations. Rise up and walk. Such as I have. Men can have the ability to make others rise up and walk. This is powerful. Men can have the ability in the name of Jesus to cause nations to rise up and walk. Ministries to rise up and walk. Businesses to rise up and walk. That everywhere you see lameness, don't just think silver and gold. Remember there is an ability within your spirit and you can speak to systems, to structures, to men, to families, to destinies. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus, the one who gave gifts to men. I speak to you where you have been at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. Tonight, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and excel. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Lack of expectation. You must define your desire tonight. Don't come in carelessly and say, Lord, as you are touching others, touch me. What does touch me mean? Because what touch me means in the mind of God is not what he means. And because he's not the one who has the need. He gives you the liberty. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And what things soever ye desire, name them, give them a frame. When you pray, you see that? That means one of the laws of prayer is creativity and imagination. Vision must be part of what guides your effective prayer. 
If there is no vision, your prayer will be amiss. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. What is the them? The them that is already defined. The them already defined. Every time people came to Jesus with a clear definition of their expectation, whether it was a centurion son or to, that their eyes be open or to rise up from, you know, their state of lameness with palsy, Jesus responded immediately. That is the reason why we guide people by allowing you to come with prayer requests. You see that now? Prayer request is God's way of helping to coordinate your expectation, to give it definition, to give it form, to help to guide you. So that when you write five, six things, you are writing it using your mind, you are writing it, and, and listen, there is intelligence. The Bible says watch and pray. The word watch there does not just mean be vigilant. It means let your mind be an active part of that process. Hallelujah. Lack of expectation. So whilst you are seated here right now, it does not take long for the power of God to visit people. But make sure you frame your expectation. And for those who are following across the globe, doesn't matter what nation, what region, you can begin to pen down your expectations. Not just to send them to us, but so that you will be a witness. That you will take them one by one. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. I told you it's a banquet. You can taste the goodness of God. Not just believe and expect. You can taste. There is a frame to it. Your life witness that God is good number one let's hurry up why do many fail to receive even in the midst of such an atmosphere lack of expectation can I give you number two lack of sensitivity lack of sensitivity their word comes only God knows how many people's words has come for someone that rise up and walk, I said, that is your miracle service word. That's it. You've been like a lame man sitting at gate, beautiful. And God is speaking to you tonight, rise up. Rise up takes courage. Rise up takes light. Rise up takes the fortitude to stand alone. Rise up takes the grace, the ability to be controversial until your life proves otherwise. Rise up and walk. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes but they are not sensitive and they are distracted. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 44, we'll just jump to 44 for the sake of time, but the context starts from 40. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. It says, If only thou had known, even in this thy day, the things that pertain unto your peace. It says, But they are hid from your eyes. And then he makes a very interesting statement. Go to 44, please. It says, And shall lay ye even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, for the simple reason. All of the calamities that were explained in 43 and the early part of 44 will come simply because thou knowest not the time. Of your visitation the time thou shall arise he says and have mercy upon Zion he says because the time to favor her yea, the set time the word set time there is the word kairos the opportune time the time that has coincided with God's predeterminate counsel can I tell you, there are seasons in life and destiny where the waters of destiny is steered. And the Bible says, whoever was the first, it was about sensitivity. There were no sentiments to it. Nobody's name was put that this year you will be the one to walk. There were many people around Bethesda, the lame, the halt, all kinds of people. The Bible says they were waiting for the stirring of the water. Two information the Bible does not give. The exact day the angel comes does not tell us. It just know that he's coming and be prepared. Take sensitivity. There were many people who had the potential to receive Elijah's mantle. Even those who were under his training, they were students without sensitivity. But this man said, I discern that you are going. And he said, if you can see me, it takes sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, to receive from God. Are you ready for number three? We have to rush. Can you imagine that all I'm giving you is a charge? Number three, are you ready? What is the third reason 
why many people do not receive from God. I call it manifesting conditional faith. Write it and I'll explain to you. Manifesting conditional faith. You can put condition in um, what they call that thing. Huh? Bracket or whatever English people. Manifesting conditional faith in quotes. What does that mean? God has to move in a certain way for you to believe he has moved. Conditional faith. First Kings chapter 5. Let's look at verse 9 to 12. There are many people whose faith is tied to a certain way. If God does not move this way, I can't believe he's the one moving. Watch this. This is the story of Naaman in the house of Elisha. My servant, first Kings, second Kings, my apologies, second Kings 5 verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses. Remember, the king now beckoned on him. Elijah, Elisha now said, okay, come to me. And the Bible says, so Naaman came with his horses, follow carefully, and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger, listen, and said, tell Naaman, go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. As a result, the Bible says Naaman was wroth. He was angry and went away. Why? He said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of his God and strike his hand over the place to recover me. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Papa rivers in Damascus better than all of this? May I not go and wash in them? The Bible says he turned and went in a rage. Because when he came to the man of God, he expected, number one, that you come, ah, you are the nah man, you are the great man. All right, let me tell you what to do. Turn around, do this, do that. You are a noble man. You can't go and wash in a dirty river, Jordan. There are clean ones that match your status. It's amazing how people come to God. There is a difference between having expectation and commanding God to behave in a way that suits your lust. Are we together now? Yes. Your expectation is the end result. The method is exclusively God's prerogative. You are not given the liberty to choose how God visits you. You are only given the liberty to set the vision that this is the expected picture. The moment you put God in a mold and say you must use this formula. For instance, there are people who if they never fall down, even if all the anointing in the world rests on their head, they, believe, they live disappointed. You see them as if they are returning from a funeral. God, I was here. I even sat in front. Whereas something mighty has landed upon their head. Are we together? God taught me many years ago. Yours is to believe me. Allow me to choose the method. There are many factors that guide God's choosing the method. Number one is your faith level. Number two, the human vessels available to partner with prophecy. They, they can alter the way God acts. For instance, if God's desire is that by tomorrow, if I prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow, someone will give you a job. Watch this. I've taught you how prophecy works. The spirit of wisdom goes around looking for the human vessel that will come into partnership with that word. I can choose as an act of my volition. Are we together now? To refuse to partner with God. God will have, that is the reason why the spirit of wisdom is there. He will keep using different strategies. The most important thing is that his word will not return to him void. Mary had a right to reject she would have said, listen, I don't want any trouble. I'm preparing for my wedding. Don't bring trouble. You are a wicked angel. You waited until I'm planning for wedding. You now appear and you want to disrupt my life. Carry your trouble and get out of this house. He would have respected her and he would have left. The mother of Jesus would have been called something else. But for sure, that, that incarnation would have happened. Are we together? This is very powerful. Tonight... Don't give God any conditions to have to move through a formula. Lord, the most important thing is that causes and yokes must get out of my family. How that will happen this night, Lord, I do not know. If it means shouting, I will shout. If it means lifting my hands, I will lift. Sometimes Peter did not even know when Satan entered him. 
he was just smiling and Jesus said do you know that Satan has finished his business with you I had to pray for you and yet he never saw Jesus praying and Jesus said I was praying all the while Lord no matter how you want to move in my life and my family go ahead the most important thing is that this yoke must be lifted the most important thing is that doors will come. There are many of us, the moment we say, may God lift you, an uncle comes to your mind. You have forced God to bring that breakthrough through that uncle. And there are some of you harassing every wealthy person because you have this, this, this poor understanding. The moment they say receive in your mind, maybe even in your prayer request now, number one was his name. The name and the name of his wife. Father, this night they will not sleep. No, that's not how a believer works. Listen, you will keep disappointing yourself again and again. There are 8 billion people on earth. Not everybody will tell God no. There are people who are yielded, including Cyrus's. And if they decide to refuse, as the owner of his property called man, he's called the father of spirits. He can manipulate any spirit, including that of Pharaoh, to give you gold. Pharaoh that will not give them straw, now suddenly gives them gold. To tell you that he did not do it by his mind he was under an influence when they left he said what have I done I carried the entire treasure of Egypt chase them and receive it back God for you you would have been blessed since if you said God by your wisdom my ways are not your ways is that not what he told you you have been forcing God walk through my ways Lord, it is civil defense. It is oil and gas. Because with my little mind, I know that is the only way I can eat and give some of my relatives the remaining. And God says, listen, it is be, I can connect you to men. Don't force God and say, you must give me a job in NMPC. You must give me a job with Shell. You must give me a job. I must work with UN. Hallelujah. And sometimes you will not get certain blessings because you do not have the spiritual stamina to stand the attacks that come with the blessing you are asking God to give you. Every realm of reality has, it has a spiritual stamina, a requirement of stamina to be ushered into that realm. Hallelujah. By the time you get to a place that is the center of wizardry, that everybody in that place is in some cult or somewhere, and now you are a passive, careless Christian, prayer almost zero, word study almost zero, and you are saying, God, bring me in the midst of those occultists. In fact, let me be a PA to the director. God says, I love you too much. I love you too much. It's compassion, not an attack. Because God will look at you and look at your mother praying and say, no, I can't do this to this woman. Are we learning? Number four. Huh. The fourth reason. Why many believers do not receive. Are you ready? Refusal to acknowledge and glorify God through thanksgiving and testimonies. The reason why many believers do not receive or do not sustain what they receive is the refusal to acknowledge God and to glorify Him through thanksgiving and testimonies. Psalm 22, 22. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Not just in my room. In the midst of the congregation, I will announce to them. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes, when we have the liberty of time, and people are healed or people are delivered and we ask people to come forward to testify it achieves many reasons attesting to the fact that the man of God is anointed is the least of the reasons you need to know that it is a spiritual system the Bible says 10 people Jesus gave an instruction to 10 lepers is that in your Bible and he was on his way passing and yet he remained there he stood there and the Bible says only one came to give thanks when they saw that they were healed, only one came and Jesus said, he didn't even say, oh, thank you, you have done well. He said, were there not 10 of you? Where are the remaining nine? And the Bible says only one was made whole, even though the rest were healed. Are we together? 
It is beyond a man of God. There are certain levels of lifting when God has lifted you. Proving certain points of anointing and power is unnecessary again. Are we together now? With all due respect and with all humility, trying to prove whether God is in this house or whether we're anointed is childishness. God has already stamped a signature that can never be erased. Are we together now? So when you ask people to come, when you ask people to testify, you are, it's not just proving that the man of God is anointed. Number one, you are letting the nation see like we always sing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today. There is an unbeliever depending on that performance, that miracle. And then number two, it helps to concretize it in the life of the recipient that God is truly at work and finally seals that miracle. Have this at the back of your mind. There are many of you today, what was glory was turned to shame because when God did it or when it started, you felt that I cannot testify. No, I'm too big. Truly, the pain has left. My God, this thing he said. So the pain has gone. I, I can't feel the growth again. Or this one, I can now move my neck. But can I come out? It's too far. I'm seated at the back at the overflow. Or I'm seated at the basement or anywhere. And whilst you are doing all of that, God is watching you. And then you give room. Because every time spirits leave men, they intend to return. Is it not in your Bible? They intend to return. One way we come into fullness is through thanksgiving. The fullness of anything is achieved through gratitude and thanksgiving. Anything God gives you and it is not yet in his fullness, you can complete that equation and move his hand. Let the people praise thee and he says, the earth shall yield his increase and God, even our God, will bless us. God, you gave me tea. Where is the bread? And God says, what are you talking about? It is tea and bread you promised me. And God will say, that bread is still far from you because you cannot say thank you for tea. Someone, the tea is not there. Just because the ingredients are there, you begin to dance and roll and say that the ingredients are there means that I can make the tea. And while he's saying that, God says, I will not only give you tea and bread, I will give you a factory that now makes it so you can bless others. <laughs> Believe what I'm telling you. Your rent has not come. But how about the 50,000 someone gave you? It's too small now. Can I tell God, thank you because of 50,000? And God says, 50,000. Whereas that's somebody's prayer request. Number one self. All right. So if you cannot, if you are too big to give me thanks because you think it is too small, then you rather remain at that level. Is the reason why we thank God for any and every miracle in this place. You see, one major problem with ministries that experience the supernatural is that they get so, too used to so, what we call notable miracles. And once a miracle is not outstanding, like rising from the wheelchair, throwing a crutch, a blind eye, visibly blind, opening, and something, once you hear someone say, oh, I can now move, you just clap carelessly, like I just have to do it so that God will not, can, the Bible says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his hair? Anything that God does is deserving of my gratitude. There are times I go to minister and almost all the testimonies are maybe just corrective things, nothing necessarily notable. I celebrate God in that meeting as if it was dead people that came back to life. Are we together? Yeah. I'm expecting a job tomorrow. Oh, the job did not come. But an old friend called me. We had a meaningful discussion that planted hope in my mind. Father, thank you. Because even though this that I expect is not here, I am grateful because I already see your hand moving. Someone shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank Let the devil hear you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for doing the things that only you can do. Only you can do. Only you can do. Do not peg yourself to only celebrate God for spectacular things. Everything God does in my life is deserving of my communicating gratitude, no matter how little. And when you learn that with God, no matter how great you are, you can translate that to people. 
no matter how big a man you are, someone can come and transfer a recharge card of 100 naira and it looks laughable, but you will say thank you. You will take the time to send text messages and say, may God bless you because that 100,000 will come with a gratitude that is worth 1 million. Are we together? Is the reason why certain people start, I'm digressing for a moment just to press a point. There are people today, do you know that generally speaking, if someone keeps giving you 100, 100,000 every day, a time will come, you'll get so used to the 100,000 and then your expectation will rise and you now say, I have two children. Oh, this man started giving me 100,000 three years ago when I did not have a child. Now I have two children. Is he aware of what is happening in Nigeria? And one day you, the courage will be rising gradually until you build momentum to say it one day. Thank you, but by now, that one million should have gotten, that uh, hundred thousand should have gotten to one million. And both God and the man will agree that you deserve to remain there. <laughs> say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Again, for someone, this is your own revelation. Go back and find the top five people that have shown you kindness consistently and tell them I came for miracle service. And I learned the power of gratitude. I have taught you here. I will keep teaching you. Send them a text. Not the type you will send. Then two minutes later, you are begging. Don't beg. Just send a text. You know, believers have funny ways. Calvary greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, the resurrected King and Savior. Amen. Just to keep in touch. Just, and, and network will not even allow that one get there. And then the real request comes. I'm reminding you again that rent has increased and uh, it's like I've not heard from you. Is it that you don't care about me again? And it suddenly makes the prior gratitude look fake. There are times for no reason. Tell people thank you. Thank you. Are you learning? Church for you. Church, I told you, is the cheapest institution that sponsors transformation. The cheapest institution on earth that sponsors transformation is the church. Every other institution has age range, quotas. If they take 10 people out of South South, 10 people from North East, that's it, sorry for you. Age range, gender prejudices. But for the church, all that is required is your availability and the meekness to receive. Hallelujah. Refusal to acknowledge God. Can I give you one more? Let me make it five, huh? The fifth reason, very quickly, why many do not receive is dishonor to prophetic instructions. This is a very major one. Dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity. Dishonor to prophetic instructions. The fifth reason why people do not receive from God, even in an atmosphere like this, Dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity. John chapter 2, we'll read 5, then we'll jump to 10 and 11. Dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity. This is the wedding in Cana of Galilee and wine had finished. Mary, the mother of Jesus, leads some of the people, the disciples to Jesus, and then she gives them a very good charge. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Don't want to do it. Do it. And they now did it. Verse 10. What happened? And came to the rulers. After the water had turned to wine, the ruler said, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. And then the Bible says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And the disciples believed on him at the strength of obedience to prophetic instructions. Can I give you one more scripture? Matthew 13, please. From verse 54, we're reading to 58. Matthew 13, 54 to 58. And when he was coming to his own country, watch this now, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence had this man this wisdom and this 
mighty works. Uh huh. 55. Is this not the carpenter's son? You see their foolish analysis? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? We know this person. Whence then had this man all these things? As a result, the Bible says they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not supposed to be without honor, except in his own country. That means every true prophet in any area, there is honor that is connected to priesthood. There is honor that is connected to results. But he says that you stand a chance to be despised in your own place. And the Bible says as a result, he did not many miracle, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus for you, almighty Jesus, healing Jesus. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth Searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. Baba Wani Kamaraka. Yeah, yes. Baba Wani Kamaraka. Searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Baba Wani Can I tell you? To receive, let me end this now. There are three keys I want to hand to you. Then we begin to pray. In order to receive of this feast of the spirit, this feast of fat things. Let's go to Isaiah 44, 24 to 27. There are three keys that are locked in that scripture that becomes for us the guiding light into our receiving the miraculous from God. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. Did you see that? Very profound scripture. Not just the Lord that revealeth, not just the Lord that Give it. I am the Lord that maketh all things. That stretch forth the heavens alone and spread abroad the earth by myself. Next verse please. That frustrated the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad and turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. I like this. That confirmeth the words of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. I say to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. I say it to the deep, be dry and I will dry up the rivers. The Bible says, watch this, you must believe in God himself. The one who makes, the one who gives, the one who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So to receive, what are the keys? Number one, you must believe in God. You must also believe in his love and his power towards you. You must believe in God. You must believe in God. John 17, 3. 
and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent you must believe in God you must believe in his love. I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. I have taught you here that every supernatural manifestation from God and by God to his people is a letter coming from heaven to you. And there are two basic things that are written in that letter. Number one, I love you. For every miracle you receive from Jesus, do not just receive the package, read the letter that is there. Every true manifestation of the power Power of God to the life of the saints comes with a letter from the throne room one is the letter of love number two he reminds you that he is still El Shaddai all-powerful tonight as you receive diverse miracles from God I beseech you by the message of God do not just celebrate the package without reading the letter my king and my savior is writing letters to people for someone the letter he's writing to you is what i told you before still stands and i have proven it right now to some he's writing to you that though your beginning be small let your letter end shall greatly increase for some he's writing to you that i am still a faithful god and i'm still deserving of your trust you must sustain the intelligence to read the letter that comes from heaven don't just celebrate the healing the breakthrough the prophetic word don't just fall down and stand up and clean yourself only to go back without receiving the letter every one of the many people here gathered tonight and the many more following online i tell you there is a letter from his majesty even our earthly system of delivering letters is so effective. You can literally write letter to someone in the North Pole, the ends of the earth, and guarantee that it will arrive. And thanks to the internet now, with one click, one click, literally, they receive the mail, the text, or whatever device you're using. How much more God? There is a letter. When he presses send, there is no network problem. It gets to you for sure. I can send a letter to one person I can send a text to one person and of the thousands of people in this place that one person will receive not ten people not five people under normal circumstances don't say he's writing to us there is a unique letter his majesty is writing be spoke to the challenges that you've gone through for someone if he says I love you it may not make sense to him you were born in comfort all your family members love God you've gone through minimal witchcraft attacks because sacrifices were made before your arrival but to someone that letter I love you from heaven will be the healing balm he comes to someone as a great physician not just to heal you physically but to heal certain deep wounds that have been locked up within your spirit wounds that were created from your background and your upbringing that have destroyed you today the letter of love must be read i have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness i have drawn you you have heard the love language from many fake people many people who were not serious they did not even mean it they were playing games yet you believe them why don't you listen to the one who is the epitome of love the bible says god is love he does not just show love he does not just have love it is the it is the ultimate the summation of his nature in one word is love god is love god is love and it is in the character of love to give this is why you can believe that he will freely give do you believe that so make sure you read the letter that comes that I love you. For others, you are reading the letter, believe me, I am still worthy of your trust. You've lost the job. You got a job in March, lost it in May, got into trouble July, entered prison August, came out September, and you are saying, I'm tired of this thing. I'm about to leave God. And he says, hey, here is a letter from heaven. For your light affliction, which is but for a moment, walketh in you a far more exceeding weight of glory, while you look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. A letter. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time for someone is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you you heard the touching testimony of the gentleman once upon a time he pushed wheelbarrow but now has been exalted that may be a letter for someone 
I am still the lifter of men. I don't just lift in Lagos alone. I don't just lift in America alone. I lift anywhere I am believed, even if it's inside a pit. You can enter a dry pit like Joseph, and the lifter does not just bring you from the pit to land. He takes you from the pit to the throne. God for you. The prison to the throne. He took Jesus from Hades until he sat at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. You've tempted me. Let me sing it. I will hold on through the storm. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal. You're the lifter of man. The lifter of man. Who is this for? That I will hold on through the storm. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal. You're the leader of man. Prophesy. The leader of man. One more time. Sing. I will hold on to the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon. Does God lift? Use the life of this man as a case study. Does God lift? Ask Joshua Selman. Does God lift? Ask Reverend Sam. Does God lift? Ask Koinonia. Does God lift? Ask Joseph. Does God lift? Ask Daniel. Does God lift? Ask Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Does God lift? Yes, sir. Yes, he does. From where? Anywhere. To where? Anywhere. Did you hear what I said? He lifts, but from where? Anywhere. To where? Say it, from where? Come on now. That anywhere can be anywhere indeed. From anywhere to anywhere. Anywhere can mean Saul to Paul. Anywhere can mean Rahab the prostitute to Rahab the champion. Anywhere can mean Ruth the despised to Ruth the wife of Boaz. Anywhere to anywhere. Let me prophesy to someone, the lifter of men, from anywhere to anywhere. May he lift you in the name of Jesus. You must believe in God's love. Number two, you must believe in his servant. You must believe in his servant. It's not enough to believe in God. You must believe in his servant. If you believe in God and you despise his servant, you will not receive anything. The law is that you must believe in God and you must believe in the vessel he has sent to you. Listen, not the vessel available, the vessel sent. Just because a man is anointed does not mean he's sent to you. There are people I've met that I prayed for and I just sensed in my heart, this is just general prayer. They, there was nothing that was drawn. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. That means Elijah passed certain widows and greeted them. How are you, madam? Fine. And he left. But when he went to the one, he was sent. Are we together? Yeah. You must believe in the vessel sent. Number three and the final key. Then we begin to pray. You must receive by faith. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. There remaineth a rest. What is the condition for that rest? The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness. It says they heard the word just like we did, but they did not mix. The word did not profit them. The word was available with potential to profit them, but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Listen to me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have taught you that faith in one word is obedience. No matter what definition you bring to faith, if it does not translate to your obeying God and obeying prophetic instructions, then a miracle is far from you. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. He never said, Peter, come. He left it to whoever believed him. Unfortunately, the one who acts is the one who truly believed, not the one who motivates. He said, come. Any one of them would have jumped into that river, that sea, and still walk. Every time God leaves a blessing without attaching a name, it is because it's for all. Bid me come. Come. Where? To the next level. Come. Where? To a higher dimension of reality. He says, come. And Peter jumped up and began to walk on water. While the rest were cheering, you can do it. You can do it. It's not fate. When he began to, to sing, they said, we told you. And God said, no, this is not how I walk with men. If they make mistakes trusting me, I will defend my name in their life. He held him and said, why did you doubt? But he stopped him from sinking. Hallelujah. Why are you here tonight? To partake of that feast of the spirit delicacies prepared by the hand of God himself the Bible lets us know that among the many things he's called is the good shepherd and the Bible says that shepherds true shepherds watch their flock even if it's by night night is an uncomfortable time it says while shepherd watch their flocks by night there are shepherds that only watch their flocks by day when things are good but this good shepherd he watches over his flock even by night and in what way there are three ways shepherds watch their flock one they feed them two they make sure that they get to green pastures number one number two they guide them because a sheep does not have any system of defense on its own its only defense is its ability to stay and trust the leadership of the shepherd are we together now yes what is the third assignment of the shepherd? He insists that they grow and multiply. This is what Jacob did to the sheep of Laban. He insisted that under his watch as a shepherd, multiplication started. So the good shepherd is here. And all of this multiplication and the rest depend on the quality of what you eat. He's giving you the buffet today. He's giving you the menu. My job is to be a faithful waiter. I'm wearing whatever color this is, but I'm a waiter in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I have dropped it on your table. The goodness of God, the benefits of God. It's up to you now to select. If I were you, I would taste everything. No, this kind, it would be foolish to just make this. You know, there are people who want to show that they are very advanced. So when they get to a table, they are hungry. They are coming from a place. Maybe they are even breaking their fast. And they just take just a slice of orange. If you are doing it to preserve, that's fine. But where the atmosphere is set like this. No. There's rice. There's swallow. There's soup. There's everything. Then you just take a slice of orange. Take water and lie that you are all right. Don't make that kind of mistake here. There are others who don't mind. They first wash their hand and say, shift all these your western things. They take one wrap take another one then you think that they feel embarrassed but they still take the third one <laughs> are we together they put one soup they add draw they add vegetables they add whatever they add stew then the protein my goodness every piece will be represented there then they now sit down you invited them there's water wine juice both destructive and organic they join everything together you are permitted to take that much tonight. And you are also permitted, listen, listen. Beyond the plate that you eat in, if you check well, you will see that there is an extra vessel to take some more and to take it for those who deserve to receive. That is how lavish this faithful shepherd is. He's prepared for us a feast. And in the name of Jesus, with the few minutes that we have, I pray that as we stretch in prayer, trusting him to bring deliverance, trusting him to bring healing, that at the end of this service, 
nobody will walk empty in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah